All right, ladies and gentlemen, Baron here. We're going to be taking out Captain America or the P-47. I'm calling it Captain America because, quite frankly, it's one of the best performing American planes right now. Ooh, we got a Betty Bomber. Um, and part of that, I think, is the battle rate. It's only 3.7, and the P-47 is uh, a pretty damn good aircraft. In many aspects, it's better than the P-51. But... I know we've got Mr. Betty Boma over here. He was the first dot I saw. P P63 and A36 are doing some are doing their ground attacks here. So we could push it a bit. Try to chew him up with 850 caliber machine guns. So 3400 divided by 4, I'm pretty sure is 450. So, I mean, like, that's how many rounds per gun you have. Coming up. Pokriskin. I recognize that name. But, I mean, when you've been playing the game as long as I have, there's a lot of names that you've encountered before. Alright, Pokriskin. Or maybe I'm like, maybe it's a very. Tech down over there. behind A key 45. Betty Bomber must be taken out. So well, it's it's a pretty simple bomber intercept mission. Uh, it would be absolutely tragic if our pilot got sniped, but I'm not really anticipating any of that happening. Um, I didn't run into any fighters, so we kind of deviated in hopes of intercepting a few enemies to see us. Someone, oh my god! But Kriskin's got no points. Poor guy. Ooh, look at the evasive maneuvers by Betty. Betty, you are very maneuverable. Time to die. Oh my gosh, my nose. Yep, so that's called Amachawa because we cut that one incredibly short. Hey, buddy. Maybe we just like maybe we should just like say hi real quick. Plus, we got we got bigger fish to fry. So, Betty Bomber, it's been a while since I've been in the sky, sir, and that is. Oh, is that just green smoke, or are those some pretty fancy tracers? So he's got 20s, but you don't want to go up against the jug, because... Heads up. And I don't really want to maneuver against the zero. Was neither of those two things would be something that we'd want to get involved with. I wouldn't mind going heads up against him. Let's see, is he turning? Because you just don't get in a turn fight with a zero. That is what you call a silly. Now that I've got some more friends in the area, we'll probably loop back. There's other considerations for him to consider. But if I knock him out, then I got a free reign on a uh, Betty Bama. Huh. Wait, who's he, who is he shooting at? Oh my tits. Look at that. A J2M falling from the sky. Alright, let's try this again. So, Jug is pretty non maneuverable in times. Some hits. 2600. Key 61 is down. We'll loop back. We gotta start engaging. We have lost a lot of altitude here. Ooh, there we go. See? You don't want to go up heads up with this. Wow. Damaged central gear leg, so, you know, that's good. J2, M2. Ooh. We got peppered a bit, but this thing's a beast. Look at the AI. AI just jumped into this to uh, make it a little trickier for the enemy here. Hit the web, make the circle a little bigger, but we're trying to build up just a tad bit of speed here. Oh, yeah, I tried to, uh, when we were out of there, is the Betty down? Betty's down. That guy should be dead. But he, he, yep, there we go. All right, so two it is. Slow start, some amateur stuff, but hey, man, that's the beauty of the jug, man. You can, you can afford that kind of... You know, mistakes. Mistakes will be made, but good old Jug, Captain America, 
We'll be fine. Now, if we had ground attack, we could probably aim for the hole, the little uh, bunker entrance on these pillboxes. Probably get some kills. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, but we don't have that. We don't have those round attack rounds. We got APITs in here. So, key 61, let's see what's the situation. Is that P63 landing? Well, I'm at low altitude, and we got a Key 61 right up on top. Let's see what's he's what he's thinking. Huh? See that A6M2? If he's going up to the BF109. I think the BF109 should be able to handle himself. A6M2, J Luxo D. Ooh, Uncle Creepy killed a carrier. At the beginning of the game, he's like, hey, carriers. And he's like, oh, I guess I'm alone. Well, he did the damn thing, sir. Props to you for taking out the carrier. We'll probably. Yeah, we just gotta climb. Let's check out. Not too bad. Line a straight line, trying to figure out what to do now. How many of them are left? Three. I think it's just that guy. Maybe. There is two going that way, correct? They're all at altitude. Well, no, this guy's getting chased down. Engine was getting crispy. Key 61 is crispified. He did now. Oh, he did. So we gotta figure out where they are. Yo, creep, you see anybody? Yeah, we've yeah, we've lost a few. Creepy. Well, that's the problem with my bum hand. See anyone over there? Typing is just a huge hassle. Aha! There we go. So a key 45 and a key 61. These are the last two remaining. If we can get them, we're four fifths of an ace. That would be glorious. Key 61 wants to go heads up. I might lose my engine this time, but I, I don't really fear much else, man. This is Jug. This is Captain America. We got that shield right. Got a critical hit on the cooling system. Oh, he, he's gonna burn up. Sorry, bud. It's time for you to die. <laughs> on command. All right, now we're gonna wet hard. Oh my god, he's the last one. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. He's crashed already? He must have landed. Oh, he's just happy to go after these AIs, isn't he? But yeah, like, I wanted to take out the jug because a lot of people have been talking about like just how amazing it is and a lot of people are like flying the jug in RB tank battles and then going after ground attack stuff. It feels like you're the A-10 Warthog. And we didn't really get that situation. We got put into the Pacific. By the way, I've been watching Banner Brothers Pacific recently and it is awesome. Um, really getting me in the feel for like just like oh so much stuff, so much. All right, we are first in line. Yes, we are. Oh my god, you're killing my Hellcats here. You bastard. I hope he takes his time on this one. Because we want to get him. Cut the web. Oh my tits, that was just... A pilot, poor pilot snipe. I thought we were gonna weaken him, maybe crit him a little bit so he'd have to level out, and then we we're gonna hop on his six and just chew, chew, chew him up. Now, what is this? Is this enemy? Aha, enemy flak. So let's get a few of those. These are like the half tracks, man. Dude, imagine a persistent battle on this beautiful landscape. 
that's what I want to see in the game. I could go on and on and on. But basically, if you haven't checked out the series The Pacific, it's by the same people who made Band of Brothers. And um, it is glorious. Absolutely glorious. So I'm going to nickname this bad boy Captain America. We got two ground units at the end there. And that's the beauty of this thing is if you're... If you like to be, have the opportunity to, you know, dogfight in the air as well as just ground and pounds, and you want to be able to switch up, you know, within, without having to change a lineup or anything, right? Then I think this is one of the best aircraft for it. Um, but that map, that map right there is one of the ones that really gets my imagination going for like what I would imagine persistent battles to be where tanks could spawn on two different parts, on two different islands, right? Depending on how many uh, landing... Oh, that's how we could do it. I should make an entire episode devoted to how I would imagine a persistent battle to kind of play out. And, you know, both practically and stuff like that. Because it wouldn't necessarily be balanced. The resources you would get to, say, spawn in um, certain vehicles, certain planes certain tanks would all be dependent on how you performed right so if 10 landing craft got to the beach you'd have more resource points for tanks versus if only one got to the beach or if none got to the beach right and oh if carriers got hit or like say there'd be periodic supply ships it, do you guys want me to do that because like i've been talking a long time in countless episodes on how I would imagine, you know, a persistent battle to go, like, at least in my eyes, how I envision, you know, the metagame, the ultimate part, the ultimate experience of War Thunder to be, instead of, instead of, um, okay, let's, I want to fly the saber, right? I don't think that should be the ultimate experience. Or, oh man, I want to, I want to drive out the patent too you know, or like the M60. I don't think that's how it should be. I think the ultimate experience should be, I want to partake in a grand campaign, in a giant persistent battle where I can switch between a P-47, a Sherman. If I want to drive a Daihatsu landing craft and make sure that my tankers have enough resource points to continue uh, respawning in, you know, some Japanese tanks, or if I want this airbase to have enough points to be, to be able to keep respawning Betty Bombers, right? And I want to drive a Daihatsu landing craft, or hey, I want to drive a destroyer around that giant archipelago and dump torpedoes, shoot at planes, and then, you know, do some coastal bombardment with my, albeit small, naval guns, then you can do that. That's what I think the ultimate experience of War Thunder should be. And, and I think it moves, it then moves the culture from a performance base to an experience and fun-based culture, which I think is much more positive because when it's a performance-based culture, well, quite frankly, there's going to be those that perform and those that don't. And when you're one of those non-performers, you're pissed about it. And you're salty and you're complaining about shit. And you forget why you downloaded the damn game in the first place. And that's to have fun. So if you guys want me to do that, let me know in the comments. Because I would love to devote an entire episode. And I'll get screenshots, graphs you know, diagrams, all kinds of ideas for you guys. I think I think that's what War Thunder could evolve to, and I think it's what War Thunder should evolve to. Instead of, oh, I, I grinded all the way up to a saber, but you know what? Those damn MiG-17, so all that months and months and hours and hours, and, on, and if it depended on it, dollars and dollars of work just to get my butt kicked by a certain overperforming aircraft or something like that, it kind of defeats the purpose, right? And I think and I think that's one of the issues with War Thunder right now is people are it's a it's a performance-based culture. And um, any any 
issue any, what would you say, any component of the game that's outside of your control and is severely hurting you will make you rage and will make you negative, or it can, right? It can make you rage, it can make you negative, it can make you have a negative experience. So if we're going to change, you know, the experience, we got to change our culture and change the goal, right? So anyway. If you guys want to make me, uh, you want me to make an episode on that, I would be happy to do it. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. That was just a brief flyout in Captain America in one of my favorite maps because of how scenic and how it really gets my imagination going. So, ladies and gentlemen, happy Sunday to all of you. Um, stay tuned this week for more uh, Patch 1.57 coverage. There's some exciting stuff coming out. I've got some exclusive footage on one or two vehicles so you'll want to check out which ones those are trust me it's gonna be super see you guys soon